Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be making some pot roast. I'm making this pot roast because I'm very curious to see if it is indeed better than the famous Mississippi pot roast. Have you heard of the Mississippi pot roast? If you haven't, I shall enlighten you and I'll put a link to the video I did about it down below. Mississippi pot roast is a pot roast that you cook in a crock pot. Just dump everything in and hours later you have a delicious pot roast. I think what makes it so appealing is number one, it is delicious. Number two, it's super easy to make. And number three, it's ingredients that you can find. So today we're gonna to be making a recipe that is similar but goes by a different name. It's called the Georgia Pot Roast, which is a state in the south of the US. There's just a couple of changes to this recipe. So I think in a lot of ways, it's very similar. I think what distinguishes the Mississippi Pot Roast is that it asks for pickled pepperoncini peppers. Today, we're going to be substituting that with pickled onions, which sounds delicious to me. I've never purchased them before, so I'm curious to see what they taste like. And I'm just curious to see how delicious this recipe is going to be. I think because of the crock pot nature of this dish, I think it'd be great to feed a crowd. I think it'd be great, particularly if you're having people coming over for a potluck, you could bring it over. If you're having a party, say a Super Bowl party, I think this would probably make a terrific slider. So a crock pot is a slow cooker. It cooks your food over a long period of time at a low temperature. It's really great for stews, braises, soups, things that are nice and wet. It is not so great for caramelization. Of course, you could broil it afterwards and get some nice browning if you like. So, as I was about to say, here is our cast of characters. I almost lost my entire jar of pickled onions. That would have been terrible because then I would have to come back to the store and I would have had a big mess to clean up. Ooh, glad that didn't fall. I'm gonna be using a chuck roast. I love chuck roast, it's nice and fatty, and it's a big hunk of meat, and it's perfect for braising. This one is about two pounds. So, I'm going to open this cryovac seal piece of meat. I remember when I could go to the grocery store, and there would be a friendly butcher there to help me out if I needed anything, but at my local supermarket there's really no one there it's not even wrapped in on a tray anymore it's just shrink wrapped and i think that's because it comes this way they can save on labor i drop it into my crock pot i guess one thing that's good about this kind of packaging is that you can't accidentally put that little absorbent pad into your crock pot by mistake, which I almost did when I made the Mississippi pot roast. I do remember that clearly, having to <laughs> retrieve the little soaky pad thing in there. Ugh. Now we're going to add one package of au jus gravy mix. I'm gonna dump about three quarters of this in because my pot roast is kind of small. So just sprinkle it right over the top. Next, a package of ranch dressing mix. So if you've ever been abroad, you might discover that ranch dressing is a very much US American thing. If you go abroad, people may not know what you're talking about or you may not be able to find it. So if you're not familiar with ranch dressing, it's a kind of tangy, sour, creamy, mayonnaise-y dressing that has dill and other seasonings, garlic powder, onion powder, and it's pretty ubiquitous here. People love using it as a marinade, putting it on salads or dipping things like carrot sticks into it. It is pretty tasty. Or hot wings, that's a pretty classic combination too. Actually, that's supposed to be blue cheese dressing, but I've seen plenty of ranch. Or fries in ranch, it's pretty. Okay, most of this packet right into here. A half a stick of butter, bloop. We're going to be adding pickled red onions. The original recipe calls for sweet Vidalia onion pickles, which I couldn't find. I live in the northeast of the U.S. and so perhaps that's why Vidalia onions come from the south. So this is what I could find and this is what I'm using. They smell great. Briny, vinegary, Ooh, a little bit sweet. It tastes like three bean salad dressing. So I'm going to add most of the contents of this as well. 
look how pretty they are, they're pink. That's it, we don't have to brown the meat at all, we don't have too many searing, nothing. I'm not even going to stir that, I'm just gonna leave it as is. We take this and place it into this, set this to high. It'll cook at about four to six hours. You can also cook it on low for eight to 10 hours. So that would be perfect if you're heading off to work, set your stuff and then come home to Georgia pot roast. Alrighty, my lovelies, I will see you in several hours to see how this turned out. Alrighty, see you in a little bit. All right, my lovelies, I am back to give our Georgia pot roast a taste. Life happened, and so I'm back a day later to see how this turned out. And that's the beautiful thing about a pot roast. It tastes even better the next day. Here is our pot roast, fully cooked. So you'll know when the pot roast is completely cooked when it is fork tender and just wants to kind of fall apart on its own. See, I'm... Um breaking this up with a spoon, it's so tender. I'm just gonna take our gravy, pour it into a pan. Since this has plenty of fat already in there, I'm not gonna add any additional butter. Typically what you would do is you'd mash up some butter along with some flour to make a paste, add it to your sauce to thicken it up. But this has plenty of fat. I didn't strain out any of the beef fat, nor did I take out the butter. So I'm doing this while the gravy is relatively cold and whisking it in, risking lumpage. <laughs> but I'm hoping that once I whisk it in, we'll be all right. I probably should have done that with a little bit of water beforehand, but we'll see what happens. And if I get a few lumps, I'm okay with it. Alrighty, my sauce has come up to a full simmer, and now you can see that it's got the consistency of a gravy. Horrible, yet thickened, glossy. If you like, you can return the meat to the gravy like this. You don't have to thicken your gravy if you don't want to. Some people like it thinner, and this is, of course, an added step. Beautiful Yukon Gold mashed potatoes. Boom. Parsley makes anything brown lovely. It just adds a little bit of brightness, but Parsley's not really doing particularly well in my garden right now. <laughs> At any rate, it's still gonna taste delicious with or without parsley. But there we go, there's our bite. It's a Mmm. Mm-hmm. The meat is tender, yet not mushy. There's a nice chew to it. It goes perfectly with the mashed potatoes. The gravy seasons the potatoes just enough. It's very, very flavorful and rich, tangy and oniony, plenty of salt, and it has a umami savoriness that I think can be attributed directly to the package of au jus and ranch dressing mix we added to this whole pot roast. In fact, I think MSG is probably what makes this dish so tasty, in my opinion. The meat is well braised and well cooked, but the MSG gives it that mm, quality to it, and the Mississippi pot roast as well. I'm surprised that one change of ingredient, essentially, really creates two different dishes. So there you have it. That's how you make Georgia pot roast. Very similar to the Mississippi pot roast with one ingredient change, and I think it is absolutely delicious. Is it better than the Mississippi pot roast? I think it tastes subjective. It really is up to you. Do you like more of the peppery, pepperoncini flavor, or are you more of an onion person? Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Salting crackers. I don't know why this makes me crave salting crackers. Mm -hmm.